Gospel according to Luke. Lord, you, Lord. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that the whole world should be enrolled. This was the first enrollment when Canarius was governor of Syria. So all went to be enrolled, each to his own town. <laughs> And Joseph, too, went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth, to Judea, to the city of David that is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house of, and family of David, to be enrolled with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. While they were there, the time came for her to have her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. Now there were shepherds in that region living in the fields and keeping the night watch over their flock. The angel of the Lord appeared to them and the glory of the Lord shone around them and they were struck with great fear. The angel said to them, do not be afraid for behold, I proclaim to you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For today in the city of David, a savior has been born for you who is Christ and Lord. And this will be a sign for you, you will find the infant wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was a multitude of the heavenly host with the angel praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I'm pleased and happy to be with you this morning, this special day. I want you to think back now to the greatest gift you have ever received on Christmas morning. Some of us have to go back a little farther. <laughs> but it's amazing how we can recall that gift, that moment. Mine was not a wonderful toy. It wasn't the baseball mitt that I still have or the bicycle that's long gone. I was a different child. Santa brought me the number one item on my list one year. It was called the Big Ear. It was like a big round satellite dish on a tall tripod. And with it, I could hear everything all over my neighborhood. It was the coolest thing I ever got on Christmas. I was not always a normal child. But this year, it's special because our family, together this time, we, we once again get to experience that whole thing through the eyes of our grandchildren. And I know some of you experienced that as well. There's nothing quite like that. It reminds me of a line in the Christmas song that I've heard that goes, For I have held the precious gift that love brings, even though I never saw a Christmas star. I know there is a light. I felt it burning bright, and I've seen it shining from afar. I would have sung it to you, but it's Kermit the Frog, and it wouldn't be appropriate for me. <laughs> The specialness of this day, though, goes well beyond the toys and the turkey and ham and the wonderful desserts and the family gatherings. It's about our loving God coming as man in the flesh to save us. And every part of that celebration comes from that, stems from that. The greatest gift we, all of us, have ever received. For some of us, though, it might be hard to get our heads wrapped around that. And we may ask, why? Why? Why would an all-powerful God decide to do that? Well, just as Jesus often spoke to his faithful in parables to help them understand, I found one for us today. Listen to this one. Once upon a time, there was a man who looked upon Christmas as a lot of humbug. He wasn't a Scrooge. He was a kind and decent person, generous to his family, upright in all his dealings with other men. But he didn't believe all that stuff about the incarnation which churches proclaim at Christmas. And he was too honest to pretend that he did. I'm truly sorry to say this to you, he told his wife, who was a faithful churchgoer, but I simply can't under understand this claim that God becomes man. It doesn't make any sense. On Christmas Eve, his wife and his children went to church for mass, and he decided to not accompany them. 
I'd feel like a hypocrite, he explained. I'd rather just stay at home, but I'll wait up for you. Shortly after his family drove away in the car, snow began to fall. He went to the window to watch the flurries getting heavier and thicker. Well, if we must have Christmas, he thought, it's nice to have a white one. He went back to his chair by the fireside to read his newspaper. A few minutes later, he was startled by a thudding sound. It was quickly followed by another, and then another. He thought someone must be throwing snowballs at his living room window. When he went to the front door to investigate, he found a flock of birds huddled miserably in the storm. They'd been caught in the storm, and they were in a desperate search for shelter, and had tried to fly through his front window. I can't let these poor creatures lie there and freeze, he thought, but how can I help them? Then he remembered the barn where the children's pony was stabled. It would provide a warm shelter. So he put on his coat and his galoshes and tramped through the deepening snow to the barn. He opened the door wide and turned on a light, but the birds didn't come. Oh, well, food might lure them in, so he hurried back to the house for some breadcrumbs, which he sprinkled on the snow to make a trail into the barn. To his dismay, the birds ignored the breadcrumbs and continued to flop around helplessly in the snow. He tried shooing them into the barn by walking around and waving his arms, but they scattered in every direction except into the warm, lighted barn. They must find me a strange and terrifying creature, he said to himself, and I can't think of any way to let them know that they can trust me. If only I could be a bird for a few minutes, perhaps I could lead them to safety. Right at that very moment, the church bells began to ring. He stood silent for a while, listening to the bells pealing the glad tidings of Christmas, and then he sank to his knees in the snow. Now I understand, he whispered. Now I see why you had to do it. It's a simple but beautiful way to explain this mystery of Christmas that we're all here to celebrate. Now I see why you had to do it. It was written by Lewis Castles, uh, this Christmas parable you just heard. And indeed, God had to do it. He had to become one of us to make us understand. Because despite God's best efforts throughout all of the Old Testament, we still didn't get the message. Sometimes God just really has to awaken us to truly open our eyes to make us understand. Christmas is, in a sense, God shaking us to make us understand. Christmas is God saying, maybe this will grab your attention. The letter to the Hebrews expresses it beautifully where it reads, at various moments in the past and by many means, God spoke to our ancestors through the prophets, but in our time, the final days, he has spoken to us in the person of his son. The Word was made flesh, He lived among us, and we saw His glory. Today God's Word has spoken to us, Word has become flesh. Let us now allow God's Word to sink into our hearts. May the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, Father of glory, give us all a spirit of wisdom and perception as to what is revealed and bring us to full knowledge of Him. May He enlighten our eyes, the eyes of our minds, so that we can see what hope His call holds for us what rich glories he's promised the saints will inherit. Merry Christmas, everyone.